In this video, we're going to look at how to get started with Accept Cloud. I know a lot of people want to understand how to start using it before they even have access to it. I think the best introduction is the Sitecore Accept Cloud introduction uh, GitHub repo. So I would advise you to go to this URL uh, here, uh, github.com Sitecore Accept Cloud introduction. And from that URL, you would go to this pre-release software it does give you a warning that it is pre-release software and it is subject to change so that's something you need to note but it will give us a good starting point to understand a bit more about how to start working with xm cloud uh, so the first thing i'm going to do is just download it so i already have this github prepo but i just wanted to kind of synchronize it just to show uh, here so i'll sync it to my branch and once I'm happy with synchronizing it, um, here I'll just show it in Explorer. And again, uh, the reason I'm showing it in Explorer here is that I want to start opening my PowerShell, my Windows PowerShell. I'll run it as an administrator, and this is really, really important because it will not work except as admin. Then I'll choose my path here, so I'll change my URL to XM intro. And then you just need to compose it, right? So the next step here is I'm going to go in and follow the steps that are said here. So I have my uh, license path, my um, my admin password, and I'll add them here. Uh, I've already done that. And then I'll just run the up command. What this will do is it will start creating these base images. So I have already downloaded all the images just to speed things up and we should start getting uh, to the docker containers being created now one important thing to note is as soon as they are created the system will ask you for authentication and you can sign up directly through the cycle oauth to be able to preview or view xm cloud so we'll see here it's just downloading all the new files and copying the sources and while it works on doing that, what I want to do actually is go through uh, what's in there. So I want to go through kind of the Docker image while it's installing. So we'll see here uh, at the top here, I have my source, which ultimately has my uh, project foundation feature layer, which we're going to go into later. Uh, I have my, of course, my Docker details and uh, my dot site core, which has all my information github config and my docker compose uh, yaml my override for it and my edge for that i'm not going to go into these because these have been detailed in most of uh Sitecore docker uh, videos but what i want to really focus on is this source file here because when we look at this we'll see here the different features and as we go into any feature you'll see here it has the rendering the models the view and so on because this is as you can see here it's mvp.feature.basic so this is the mvp site and this is actually built using mvc whereas for ones that are not mvc so if we go to Sitecore user group conference and then we'll go to any of these ones here and then source we'll see that these are uh, using um, Next.js. So they are Next.js components here. You'll see this is the layout and we'll see all the components within here. These are of course the out of the box SXA components. This is what's going to be shipped or currently planned to be shipped as part of uh, Sitecore uh, Cloud or Sitecore XM Cloud. Uh, and these are the ones that have been developed by the team. So you'll see here things like speakers, session and so on. And this is something we're going to zoom into much, much further in other videos coming up. But I just want to quickly show how the structure of this is. So you'll see here that you have the imports at the top, which imports the text, rich text field and so on from Sitecore JSS Next.js. And then you have your interface, which defines what your fields are. And think of this as your template, your Sitecore template, what fields it has. And we're mapping them here into our fields. Then I have my props which is ultimately my params and my props. These are my rendering parameters and they're always key string, uh, key, key dictionary of strings. And of course my fields is referencing that type, which is the fields interface. And then for each 
um, for each variant, rendering variant, you'll see it has this uh, export. So each rendering variant is ultimately one of these exports. And I can probably go into something that has more than one just to show you that here we have two different types of um, rendering variants for the promo. One is called default and one is called with text. And you'll see that's why they, we have two exports here. Okay, so now that my actual environment is continuing, it's saying logging into Sycor, and this is what happens here. It shows that device confirmation. I'm going to confirm it, and it tells me, congratulations, you're all set. And this will continue uh, populating my solar managed schema and continue on the deployment itself. So just to note, within that steps, you need to uh, connect your device or define your device and connect it. So let's go back to my promo here. So as I was saying, you have the default, you have with text, you have your promo props and the fields, of course. And what they've done here, which is kind of neat, is they've used one common constant for the empty. So this is the empty hint, as you can see. So ultimately, if props.fields has values, then return this DOM else return that promo default component and it's just reusing the code uh, so that you don't have to write the same code twice here. So it's a good practice and generally good structure for uh, creating a React component. And again, we're going to zoom into much further into how we create these components. I'm going to talk a little bit more about how we uh, go about doing it using using story um, book with uh, Sitecore, just to help uh, our front end developers work much, much faster without the need to be tightly coupled to Sitecore. Now that it has completed, you'll see that it's created all our indexes. It discovered one change and it's applying the changes and it's opening the site. So you'll see that the host is XM Cloud CM here. So that's my host. I can just open it in browser and by the way, it will automatically open it for you. So you'll see here, this is my Psycho user group uh, um, sites, both of them, the Europe one and the other one. And then we have our XM Cloud instance. So again, from XM Cloud here, you, this is the new XM Cloud. You'll see the logo here of XM Cloud uh, and the new interface. Uh, and from here, we're gonna see kind of the normal stuff we're used to, like content editor. And of course, it's the first time it's loading, so it is a little bit slow but um, it will become much faster as we uh, as it starts working. And you'll see here, for example, my, our Cycle user group con uh, conference shared site, our uh, two other sites, the EU and ANZ sites are both here. And of course, this is pure JSS, but it's SXA headless. So you do kind of have uh, all the capabilities of SXA with headless SXA. So here, and again, this is going to be uh, further detailed in other sessions, but you'll see here headless variants that have like the call to action with its variant. Right now, you'll see that the variant has one value only, which is the name, which is default here and with text here, which we had seen in here where we had the default and the with text and that's how it's mapping ultimately these to which component or which um, component variant it should be rendering from the Next.js.